Why can't you give Skybite a break? Pardon me? Why can't you give Skybite a break? Oh, because he's a little b <laughs> <laughs> He needs to be put down and then return. Destroy him. Terrorize Skybite. But he's your second in command. Ah, uh, well, you know, he's always, he has, he's way too big for his robotic britches, let me tell you. His, his pistons are just a little too big. <laughs> now, now, are you talking about Skybite or are you talking about Peter Spellus at this point? Uh, pardon me, Papa. Uh, are you talking about Skybite or are you talking about Peter Spellus at this point? Uh, exactly, right. <laughs> I think both. <laughs>The Unicron Battles was the subline imprint for the latter half of Armada. In it, numerous characters received brand new powered up colour schemes, based on the episode Puppet, where the Minicons used their power to repair and strengthen several damaged Transformers who, in the process, gain new decos. Most of these toys use the Power Link's prefix, one of the exceptions being Megatron, who in the US became Galvatron. As always, we'll start with the Minicon partner. Clench, at least depending on the country, is an entirely separate entity from Leader One. Of the two, I prefer these colours. Two-tone purple, one shade so dark it comes off as black at a casual glance. Gold for the cannons, and the silver cab windows. It looks good either way, but the omission of Leader One's gaudy safety orange is major points in Clench's favour right there. Based on Leader One's Dreamwave profile, this alt mode is a mobile cannon. It more or less falls in the same category as Blackout, in that it's pretty abstract, and the cannons are articulated. But instead of ball joints at the base of each cannon, you have a series of hinges. Also, unlike Blackout, they cannot fold out to the sides. Clench's robot mode is also merely adequate. Nothing stands out design-wise, the only new colours are the light grey chest and yellow visor, and his articulation is, as you'd expect, minimal. The shoulders swivel all the way around, the hips swivel back and forth, and the knees are hinged. Those last joints would be more effective if the gun barrels didn't fall behind his legs, hindering them. I guess the only noteworthy detail is that the right fist is suspiciously shaped like a post. There's a reason for that. Clench also has a weapon mode that's basically the robot with the gun barrels deployed, but it works well enough, since the shape is roughly that of a blaster. If I had to nitpick, since the handle is made up of one of Clench's hands, instead of a post in the center like, you know, most weapons, it looks awkward when held. It's just my OCD kicking in, honestly. With the Unicron Trilogy, I generally like the Galvatron repaints over Megatron, though this is my least favourite of them. Even then, Megatron himself doesn't look bad, save for, again, that safety orange. Armada Galvatron's colours may be an homage to his Generation 1 counterpart, either from the Marvel comics or the original G1 figure. Primarily white over three shades of purple, two of which are the same as Clench's, with some gold and yellow to stand out from his namesake. He lacks some of Megatron's metallic paint apps, but makes up for it with the gradient burns and battle damage, most of it on the turret. The actual vehicle mode is the ever-divisive H-Tank. Several figures like Animated and Prime Shockwave also fit this category, but from what I can tell, this is where it all kicked off. The most common criticism of the H-Tank aesthetic is, well, take a wild guess where the robot limbs are stored. If you said the turret, please seek an appointment with Vrong. The shoulder pads, which are essentially part of the arms, and the legs clearly make up the tank's armoured skirts, which for some results in a very predictable and uninspired transformation. I can understand the issue, but I still like the design. For one, each armoured skirt half actually pegs together, unlike animated Shockwave. The armoured panels and the bulk of the skirts give it a robust feel. Also, the sculpted detail is through the roof, with various mechanical features, vents, the blades and… headlights? at the front of each armoured skirt, not to mention the treads themselves. And yes, they're solid, not actual functioning rubber tracks. 
Instead, he rolls on four plastic wheels built within the treads. But let's be real, you don't care about all that, do you? Because this mold is most likely remembered for its gimmicks. And there's a lot to unpack here. Firstly, these pincers at the front are designed to grab minicons, though since they spring back open, I question their practicality. At the front, on the right you have a deployable... launch pad? ramp? with a minicom peg each side. And on the left, this switch opens the trio of armoured panels, each with its own minicom port. At the rear, you have a ramp and claw assembly on the right, whereas on the left, you have this giant claw trap, though only the smallest minicons can actually fit inside. You'll notice a lot of these gimmicks revolve around Galvatron violently capturing minicons, tying nicely into his power-hungry nature. Then there's the turret, where the electronics reside. Rotate it and you get a line of dialogue, not by David Kay, followed by various gun blasts. The power is mine. The power of what, helium? The line is different, but the succeeding gunfire is the same as Megatron's, I believe. The gun barrel fires a pressure-launched projectile when you push it back, let go when it springs out again. With or without the missile, pushing the barrel activates another sound. Plug a minicon on the peg near the back of the turret, rotate it a little either way, and you get... <laughs> Lastly, the port within the L-shaped slot swings forward spring-loaded launchers when you slide the peg back, then to the side to lock things in place. Fully deployed, we get... For each sound, this translucent panel on the turret with the Decepticon sigil lights up. Unlike Megatron, Galvatron sports a slot in the battery cover for a small plastic tab that was included in the set at retail, which my copy is missing. Inserting the tab would block the sounds without having to take out the batteries. Removing it enabled the sounds again. All I can say is good luck finding a Galvatron on the aftermarket still with this tab, as I'm sure many, including this copy's previous owners, either lost it or threw it away. Like Blur, Galvatron's bot mode looks pretty damn cool. He's stocky and slender in the appropriate spots, resulting in a powerful build, ideal for a brutal Decepticon leader. Unlike Blur, much more of the alt form is worked into the robot, with only the turret hanging off his back. Most tank formers that do this typically have the turret positioned with the barrel pointing straight up, like G1 Brawl. Though for this mold, rotating it 90 degrees clockwise allows you to fold the barrel forward so he can still make use of it. By far, his two most divisive features are the giant horns formed from those pincers, and the tall shoulder pads that give G2 Laser Prime a run for his Energon. And yet, I wouldn't say either of those are oversized. I mean, they're prominent, no denying that, but... I don't know, I guess I'm just too accustomed to the design at this point. This mode introduces more lavender as a secondary colour, which works well with the other shades of purple along with the white, resulting in a nice analogous colour scheme. As addressed in my last review, lavender could have worked for the Air Assault team, especially as the Dark Saber, to create a glowing energy blade effect. As is, while Galvatron's white is purer than the Air Assault teams, their decos are otherwise a good match. It's like this sword was made for him. At least that's what Galvatron would boast. The articulation is, for the most part, perfectly fine. The head turns all the way around, the shoulders technically swivel all the way around vertically, though they'll usually collide with either the turret or the lower legs if you attempt a full 360 rotation. The arms splay outwards at the shoulders, the forearms rotate below the elbows, and the elbows themselves bend about 90 degrees. Oh, and they're gold. They're not cast in the material susceptible to gold plastic syndrome, as far as I can see, but the fact that they're especially stiff on my copy is... unnerving to say the least. Only the right wrist swivels, though unlike Wheeljack, there's a reason for this. 
But before that, the waist rotates as part of the transformation, and here we get to the main point of contention. The hips and knees can only move sideways, the former can't swivel back and forth, and the latter can't bend. I don't know if there was room left in the budget to craft these joints as such, but it's still pretty frustrating, especially on a figure this big. Unicron.com did a Megatron kitbash that results in actually poseable legs, showing that it was feasible. Galvatron has a total of 14 minicom pegs, 12 of which can be accessed in tank mode. The other two are on his arms. One of them, well I'm hesitant to call it a minicom gimmick since you can slide it yourself, but doing so deploys a switchblade. I doubt this was an actual feature, but the panel designed to hide his ugly mug in tank mode can serve as a face shield if you like. Lastly, we have his evolution transformation which does show up in the anime occasionally. Basically pull up his upper body and swing the turret assembly round to shield his torso. Rotating this lever should, in theory, spin the turret. Instead the turret turns a few degrees and just stops, even when you keep at it. Funnily enough, rotating the turret yourself causes the lever to spin no problem. And yes, the sounds still work. When going back, make sure the lever rests inside this small clip on the left hand side. All in all, Armada Galvatron is a highly enjoyable figure, and definitely my favourite of those covered in this marathon. In fact, this might be spoiling a future video, but I actually prefer it to the Combiner Wars take on the Armada Megatron slash Galvatron design. Clench is… okay. He's about on par with Blackout and several of the 3 pack minicons. I will say, while this set gets a gold, it's on the low end of that rank as the substandard leg articulation is a letdown, and I acknowledge the tank mode's not for everyone. Though this marathon's at an end, I'm not done with this line as a whole, I just want to focus on other figures for now. And you know, this toy's cool and all, but Galvatron himself is in need of a true upgrade. Not a powered up colour scheme, I mean an actual, new, Physical fault. You know where this is going, don't you?